just give me one final. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's the best thing about Orellana? Coming home. <laughs> Barcelona. Media director and uh, videographer at Nash Tackle. I'm on my way back home from Orellana, reminiscing about this trip, trying to figure out how to make you guys understand what we've just experienced. Okay, the truth. The truth is, I don't even know where to start. I've done my fair share of filming trips over the past couple of years, but this one was a first. A first in many ways. First time I was in Spain, first time after COVID, first time filming with Bastel and first time out with Samir. And it was definitely the first time we incorporated jet skis into our fishing. The truth is, it did at least make a nice intro to this film, but we'll get to that. I guess it's just one of them first. It all starts with a dream. No, no. The, the, you know, that's a very cliche carp fishing dream. I think the dream was, number one, I hadn't ever been fishing with some air, so that was a big part of it. <laughs> To come to a lake of this magnitude as well, I love a big lake, love it. So when you combine those two elements, yeah, then the bigger picture does become, once I'm here with Samir at this incredible lake, is that boat battle. Lucky. But you've caught carp, so... Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not writing it off either. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, my rods are out now. My rods are out now, we're gonna have one more big move. One more big job on, one more load the boats, one more across the lake to another point. And tonight I will put my head back down on this pillow and I will dream of the big lunges in the boat, slow ticking of the reel, being pulled around and then back around it, and then it just hitting the surface. That is the dream. Let's be frank about it, I didn't think I was going on this one. The same as the 10 previous in the last two years, where I didn't manage to go. I thought this would be exactly the same. It was going to get cancelled. There's a backstory to, to this. You know, to, to really fill people in, Bastel flew into England, fair play. Like, what a guy, so I didn't have to do the drive on my own. I um, mean, it is a fair old slap. We're talking like 25, 30 odd hours. We actually stopped off in Perpignan for three days and had the most amazing party, beach parties, minimal sleep, world-class supermodels with, all, with Ollie and Reedy and Dom and Lolo and Thib and yeah, basically it was Lolo and Cindy's wedding. So we went to this wedding, absolutely incredible, time of my life, very much needed and haven't sort of socialised like that for some time now. 
Um, and then Basta would, <laughs> and I extended that a night further. Whereas instead of driving st straight to St. Clairs, we went to Barcelona for the night. <laughs> Why not? If Bastille and I had driven from England straight to Samir and Claire's, you would probably see me at the start of the film in a very different light in terms of I'll be full of beans. And so I basically got there a different person to how I would have if we'd have gone straight there. I don't regret it, you know. And then another one. Fucking told you I've seen them show, and you fucking all laughing at me. Did you see it? Yeah, fucking they're pushing out there. Honestly, I had two absolute lumps last night. Orlana's always always been on the radar. It's not like the complete unknown, but there's definitely a large mystique still about it. Um, I seen Nick's video many years ago. I've seen plenty of other photos across social media, even back in the day in the magazines, you know, it's been cartfish for a long time, but unlike maybe some of the other sort of super waters that I've had the, the pleasure of visiting in, in Europe, this one still feels to me very underfished. Um, obviously Samir's out here now, um, wanted a session with Samir for a long, long time. And, this is the perfect venue to spend, you know, the amount of time I'm going to get now with him at a venue like this. It's going to be special. What, however it unfolds, it's going to be a real special trip for me. And yeah, already I'm feeling there is that element of you just don't know. This like could throw up something truly breathtaking. Big gear on for it, yeah. Big leaders. Strong braid. Samir is saying yeah, everything is like 300, 320, 350. I'm gonna try and keep it as uh, as close in as possible. That'd be pretty cool, fishing a lake so big, but basically just sort of flicking out baits over the head. If it had been five years ago, I would have been pecking Samir's head in the run up to it more. What do I need Samir? Do what do I need to take? But I've done a bit of it now. And I suppose just the fact that I was going with Samir, no, not, no intimidation. We don't get any sort of scale of the size. My first sort of viewing of it coming down that dusty track was, you know, point, point, point zero of a percent of it, just one small bay. I wouldn't say I was like, oh my God, you know, like when I've pulled up other, you know, I remember approaching Bled and seeing it for the first time, just like, wow, man. But yeah, not really with Orlana. It was more, I, I kind of knew it was going to be quite barren, rocky. I knew it wasn't going to be luscious and green. Maybe that was a sort of down effect to it. Perhaps if I'd have seen it, with it all being lush and green, I might have been a bit more like, but no, I wasn't. I'd be lying if I sat here and said, yeah, it blew my mind. It didn't. It didn't. And a lot of that could have been down to the fact that I was really tired. And I wasn't like, like I say, I'm sitting here, it must sound so negative, man. Like, but it's, it's how I felt at the time. When you just look at one bay, like that very first bay next to Samir and Claire's house, it's very uninspiring. It really is. You know, there was huge positives. I wouldn't have gone otherwise. I really wanted to fish with Samir. Really wanted to incorporate jet skis. Really wanted to get out of England after the last two years we've had. So there was a load of driving forces, which, you know, made it exciting. It, this, I'm talking in, these first, in this first day or two, there was loads of reasons why I was so happy to be there, but it wasn't actually Orellana that was the big pull. I'm getting too old for this. You look old and handy. Cloud, mate. Can't fix up. We went out.
out for dinner that evening. The light was nice. It was a nice evening, but it, again, it wasn't a sort of blow you away sunset. And at that point, it was really our last encounter with civilization. We went to a little restaurant. There was lots of other people around. I didn't feel at one with the venue, if that makes sense. We'd parked the car there. I'd walked across the road. There's Orellana. Okay. There's Orellana. The four of us enjoying our last supper with Samir's family. I've known Alan for quite some time now and I could tell that he wasn't all buzzing and ready to fish. Don't get me wrong, we're all excited about the days ahead. Like, how couldn't we be? And as soon as they were talking about fishing, he was switched on, starting to feel the pull of the lake. It might not have been the biggest buzz when we first got there, but for sure it's the biggest steak I've ever had in my life. By that time I was sick of all the crazy Barcelona stories and I was ready. I was ready to get going. I'll be a local by the time I'm done here, mate. I'll be olive picking before the season's out. I'll be an olive picker. After a day of prep work, it got late. We finally got the jet skis down to the bank to start our first night's fishing in the bay, right in front of Samir's place. A small percentage of the lake we'd seen at the time. Uh, try to avoid making sharp turns because it will nosedive and go submarine. Mm -hmm. Because um, that's what this one's made for doing tricks on. Yeah. So just uh, try and keep your movement steady, keep your centre of balance good, Rob, and we should be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> tricks. Tricks, last day. Do you want to have a go then? Yeah, of course. Maiden voyage. I'm really proud of you. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I've got it. You got it, yeah? yeah? Do what with it, pull it halfway out? Yeah, all the way out is reverse. That's right, jet skis. I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> They're just so, so much fun, aren't yeah. they? They're, they are so just a bollocks, and the only opportunity I've ever really had on them is when you pay an extortionate amount of money. You know, when you're on holiday somewhere, like beef are yeah. 100 euros for 15 seconds. Like, <laughs> uh, so yes. Yeah, How just, much was it this time? Uh, it's a little bit more this time. <laughs> it's an investment. <laughs> Solid investment. It's a solid investment. Look at it, mate. Scope jet ski. Coming soon to a yeah. fishing shop near you. Right, so we get some fuel in and get going? It's getting late now. Fuel's all the way up there, isn't it? Does he need me to do anything? No, just give me oh, some fuel. <laughs> Maybe it's not the best idea to mix them together. I ain't talking about the jet skis either. Maybe there's a reason we haven't paired them up for a fishing trip before. I already got the feeling this could lead into a chemical chain reaction of madness, seeing the lads play with their new toys. We were finally getting the rods out. We also got to experience the feeling of the pitch black which was surrounding us. A couple of lights from the few houses in that bay were the last bit making me feel like I'm still on the same planet. I could only imagine how dark it'd be once we got out there into the wild. The heated up rocky banks made it feel like a hot sunny day and the mozzies were relentless. <laughs> Placing the rods in an area where we had seen fish show in the morning hours gave us a bit of confidence. Confidence you need when you put a rig out into a lake of that size. Hoping that the carp were about and one of these special fish would come across that tiny little trap. We lost sight of Samir, who was heading out far into the pitch black and using the night wisely to get some rest. Alan placed his rods closer in and as usual, it took him a long time. 
but his meticulousness paid off right before sunrise, making his dream of an epic boat battle on Orellana become reality. I need the boat battle. Go, go, go. Have the words go. No. Yeah. You got a net? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it didn't feel very big. <laughs> I was dreaming of fucking 20 kilos, mate. <laughs> Not two pounds. And now I'm in a world of shit. That second morning, um, yeah, I don't want to say it, but the boys always laugh at me anyway. It was a shower. <laughs> it was, let's put it like this, Bastel told me to flop it back. We're not filming that. <laughs> Come on, bro, it's my first ever carp from here, like, give it a little bit of credit. So yeah, film my very small common. Um, and then faffed around a lot, man, preparing for the day ahead. And we kind of decided that was it. We move him. Mate, I'm just uh, I'm just really hoping he's got the patience, you know. If, if we're on fish and we're not catching, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit more than 24 hours, which is a bit of a challenge for Al really, because he's uh, super, super active. But um, I think if we're gonna have a chance at a big one, sometimes we've got to be patient, you know, so. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it pans out. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to spending the next eight, eight days with Al, so. Lovely. Yeah, 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 of course, it's Alan. Right? It's turbocharged, isn't oh, it? Right, this is what I need to, Claire needs a lift, mate. I'll tell her she can come down now. I'll have to pack out my van somewhere, get all my shit out. I need a chair as well. I was gonna have a proper broken back. Yeah, can you bring me, oh no, you can't bring me a chair. You can't walk away down here with a chair. Um, can you bring me some? Some air. No, 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 are you talking about me? Yeah, but I'm fucking still... <laughs> it is hard, and I think together, I don't know where this is going to go. This could be the ultimate session, the greatest experience of all time, or me and him are just going to... Alpha males. <laughs> Listen, there's only one alpha on this bank space. <laughs> I'm not really fussed, you know? I'm a bit of a bank tramp, to be honest. Like. I'll eat what's ever in the bag. Sometimes I'll just literally go in the kitchen and just scoop up some leftovers, some tinned crap. Food is certainly not a priority for me. But Alan was just like, no, bruv, no. We're gonna live like kings on the bank. And it's that foreign ringtone, like, answer, 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 like pacing up and down my office. And he did. You know what I mean? Mate? Food? What's going on with food? Why? <laughs> and then it all um. Oh, Al, yeah, you know, I mean, damn, we've been having a chat about, well, don't just start chat. We've been having a chat about it, and basically I've managed to find this little lady, and uh, she just lives like in a small hut she's built on one of the points, and she's, she's basically said that she'll provide, she'll cook for us every day. And already my guard's up. Like, this does not sound good. Like, oh, well, well, that's not what he told me. He, you'd been sent the menu. Yeah, he sent me the menu. Right, so hang on a minute, Dan. It's very different to you just reply going, yeah, we'll sort it out nearer the time. Yeah. You had seen that. You had seen that piece. You had seen that piece of documentation. I don't believe you hadn't read down it and got to lizard pie, rabbit stew, vulture, butterfly vulture, like. <laughs> just not prepared to dedicate that much time to eating, but he's promised to cook for me, so I'm really looking forward to some uh, gourmet Alan Blair experience on the bank, so yeah. I'm really struggling to listen to him because I'm trying to concentrate so hard. One false move now, we ruin everything. So had a lovely breakfast. Claire come down to see us. Um, I think Samir had actually walked down to his swim to start packing things away. And upon arrival, had quite a subtle drop back. Um, 
giving it, well, I'm in, I'm in. And um, yeah, we all kind of run up there. We sat there and I watched it all unfold. For a drop back as well. And I've watched a couple of lunges and it was a long way out, you know. Let's go, ha ho silver! 160, 170, 180 meters. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, that's a bigger. Should be a bit bigger than I thought. It's definitely a thought, eh? Oh yeah. We need to weigh this now, Alan. <laughs> it's getting bigger by the second, bro. It's a good thought, eh? He opened the folds of the net, and yeah, you just you couldn't imagine. It's a long car, bro. Look at it. That was beyond my wildest expectations to, <laughs> for, to, to see a carp like that. Like I say, they remind me so much of the, the Gamera fish. I'm really bizarre scale pattern with lots of micro scales and then big scales and this one was almost linear the front end of the fish ridiculous just a unit an absolute unit and we called it you know i was saying 47 48 so it was flitting between somewhere between 35 pounds and 55 pounds and his head was all over the place you know he knew that it was his biggest mirror from the lake and yeah, really, really special. Really special. It's proud. It's proud. Thank yeah. you. Check that out. Proper selfish. All the veins in it, mate. It's quite weird, this one. Look at all the little bits in it, man. Fish of a lifetime, bro. Does that count as a linear? Yes. Counts as a banger. It's certified. It's certified. certified. <laughs> Straight up 10 out of 10. Hopefully it's just the start of things to come, you know. Well, we've got a bit of time, so who knows? <laughs> but yeah, this Let's is make a great magic. Start. You think we're staying now, Al? I think another night, bro. Yeah, yeah. go. Yeah, well oh, done. Yeah, man. Like, really well done. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, Samir. Thanks, Bob. Well done. This is it. That's what we thought. Basto and I, we had our film in the bag. Filming at this place, jet skis, 53 pound mirror on the first day. What more can you ask for? We just wanted Alan to catch a big one as well. So the decision was made. We stay another night, wrap up the shoot in two days and head to Barcelona to celebrate. The Nash boys did it. Orellana, done. Fishing time! Little did we know about the adventure we were just getting into. This is Orellana. Anything and nothing can happen, you know? Like, we could spend eight days trying to find them and not. It's 37 kilometers long, you know? It's, uh, I think, 6,000 hectares, this lake. So, you know, if we don't find them, then pff, we could all be going home with a uh, with nothing in the bag, but like I said, this is Oriana. It can be everything and nothing. On a place like this, you're better off expecting nothing. And nothing happened. We're making a film relying on an animal making a mistake. I wouldn't say we were disappointed. It is what it is when you're out fishing. For the entire second day, we were sat behind motionless rods. Alan being Alan, he was up and down the bank 
trying to do anything to figure out how to get a bike. By the time the sun set, we kind of knew we needed to be somewhere else. I guess we were just lucky that first day. That isn't luck. Samir, he kept saying to me, look, don't worry, Al, I'm just lucky. Better to be lucky than good. No, Samir. <laughs> a bit of luck won't hurt. A strong coffee, solid plan. That was our strategy for that morning. I'm excited, I'm going. Going on jet skis though, fishing gear on it, bro. Well excited. <laughs> I'm slightly <laughs> anxious about this big old jet ski journey, mate. <laughs> because I went out on the first night just beyond where that sort of glare line is now from the sun. And up until that point, it was really calm. Yeah, we're in the shell. And then I back. hit like a new bit of water and it was just swell, mate. Like, yeah. And I know we've got a long way to go. The first time I actually properly fished this lake, I soon realised that a five horsepower motor and a three metre boat isn't going to work. Like, it's just not going to work. Like, it took me nearly five hours to get to the very top of the lake. And that's a big chunk of your day, you know. And it doesn't, and most of the time, I'm just sitting in the, sitting in the boat like, <laughs> my head's ringing, nothing's really happening. If there's a bit of a chop on the water, it's even worse. It just takes longer. and. I'm just sitting there contemplating, like, how can I get round this lake quicker? And yeah, well, there's sort of a horsepower restriction um, without taking the license. But saying that though, the license I've ended up taking anyway for the jet ski. But this jet ski can do 50 mile an hour on the water. And if I'm fishing a short session, I can get my bed chair on the back, a rucksack, a bucket in the front, um, and the rods literally across the back strapped down. And, you know, I can be at the very end of the lake in an hour. And that's a big difference, you know? The only thing is they're a little bit noisy, but um, as long as I've got a little dinghy towing behind me to drop my baits, like, I can't see it oh, being yeah. a problem. There? Mate, there isn't a right or a wrong in this. <laughs> like, so, I don't know, I'm just experimenting. Okay, it's just, I'm just giving you friendly advice because I care about you, Alan. No, you don't. <laughs> got to be in it to win it, bro. <laughs> It's just the beginning, Mush. It's just the beginning. Right. cowboys on jet skis, all dressed in camo green, racing across Orellana. It did draw some attention. So the boys, of course, were stopped by the Guardia Seville, which wasn't a big deal. We had all the documentation and licenses needed in place thanks to Samir. And a short pit stop on the bank was the last time we'd see them for quite some time. Bastor and I, we were left behind with nothing but Google Maps pit. And the two cowboys took off on their own, heading towards a more promising area of the lake. first day, we had 23 kilometres to go to, to the first spot. We did it in under an hour. Dan and Basto, four and a quarter hours. We've been going too long now. There's been no, like, nothing to sightsee. No cocktail bars. No cocktail bars. No booze cruises. No girls in bikinis. Nah. Nothing. Now, I ain't got time to waste. By the time the boys had tipped up, my rods were out, the leaders were tied, the rigs were attached, the pod was set up, the bite alarms were screwed on. By the time we finally got there, you were ready to be cooked for. Brilliant. Thank you, 
Better than that Burger King. Who needs a Burger King? You can cook eight bacon cheeseburgers on a tiny stove in the middle of nowhere. Who needs sleep if you can place your rods in the dark? All day spent in a tiny boat with a loud engine torturing your eardrums. Heat, dust, rocky banks. What more do you want? Well, it's exactly what we wanted. We're here on a mission, chasing Alan's dream of that epic boat battle. Once those rods were out at silly o'clock, it didn't take long to once again delay that good night's sleep I was dreaming of. Can you see that? Yeah. What is it? Cut? What is it? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it is fucking massive though, bruv. I'm basically living on minimal sleep. Maybe I'm old, maybe my body's telling me you need to slow down a little bit, but I was up on my own, you know, for, for three fish. I was hoping I was gonna get some bites, but it would be like two hours, so I'd get a couple of hours and deal with that for an hour and then get maybe a couple more hours sleep. And yeah, it's now one, 1.30, and I'm thinking I need to get to sleep, man. Just lay down. <laughs> Of course, Whee! off it goes and, and I lost it. So it's probably now half one, two in the morning. Didn't lose my shit, I wasn't angry. I'm def definitely questioning things, but it was more of a conscious decision. Do I now go through the process of another 45 minutes to go all the way out there, two, 300 meters and place the rod? Or do I just go to sleep for a couple of hours? You know, um, you know, and it's, it's and it's a big lake. It's it's a big challenge, man. You don't want to be dropping bites, but it happens. And he's been unlucky. But Alan's a soldier, mate. Like he refocused himself hard last night, didn't he? And got both them rods back out. It was like a solid bit of angling. Had one, lost one, and also had a catfish, so three bites. Dan come and spoke to me, he's like, oh, I've never seen you like so angry. I said, I'm not, I'm genuinely not angry. Are you disappointed when you lose a fish? Especially on an expanse of water like this, you never know what that bite would be. Like, it could be a carp of a life, it could be 38.5 kilos, bro. Every time I've been out in that boat last night, every time, you know, and you're winding down to it, the motor's on full throttle, and you're just chipping out there as quickly as you can, picking up that braid. All the time you're thinking, when I reconnect with this and lift this up, whether that be out of the weed or, or, or out of the depths, just don't know the scale of what will hit the surface. It could be life-changing carp, you know. Special carp, really special. Kind of small in the grand schemes of what might be out there, but my first proper one, yeah. Really, really, really cool. One catfish, one lost one in the bag. Maybe not a life-changing one, but a moment in life I'll remember, taking these catch picks of Alan's first proper Aralana carp. At this point, I once again experienced that there's more than just the big ones we're after in carp fishing. Catching one out of this expanse of water in the middle of Extremadura is more than most of us carp anglers would ever dare to dream of. Big smiles and happy faces that morning, and high hopes, knowing we still have plenty of time left. I really want another bite. I really want another bite. I really, really, I really, want, really, another really bite. want another bite. But I'm alright to hang it out for just a big one, brother. I'll let you catch all the 10 pounders, brother. It's absolutely fine. They're 20s now. We've gone up a level. Oh, we've gone we're up a up, level. We're up a notch. Up, up. Up another level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really true, is it? The 30 pounder, 15 kilo isn't a small carp. I shouldn't really say it. And I just think over the last few years, I've been lucky enough to have caught so many big fish that now it's all relative, isn't it? It's a scale, isn't it? In England, I'd be, in England, I'd be happy with a 20 pounder. You know, I'd be ecstatic with a 30 pounder. I'd be over the moon with a 40 pounder. I'd be crying at a 50 pounder, you know? But here it's just that scale moves 
upper level. Wicked night, but I'm going in today knowing that it's going to be loads more suntan lotion, loads more clawing for a tiny little bit of shade behind a rock or in the hide. Uh, and I suppose waiting really for nightfall to come round and keeping my fingers crossed that the activity will kick off again. Albinos are never going to be that great in this temperature and sun, mate. So I hope he's brought Factor 50 with him because I'm telling you now he's going to need it. Two months of Samir give me a daily weather update. Ah, look at the temperature in my van today. It's unbearable. Yes, Samir, it's Spain. We all know it's hot where you are, mate. Like, there is other places in the world that it's hot too. You're not the only one who has to deal with a bit of sunshine. Good job I checked on the weather forecast and, and noticed that it was hot out here. It's a savage environment, mate. The heat, the sun, where's the shade? It's definitely not for everybody. Even just the way it looks is not for everybody. A lot of people want green, lush, beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I love green, lush and beautiful but I can also appreciate the hard, the dry, the coarse, you know, because it's got its own set of challenges. Come on. Just got to get past the weed. Oh, oh no. Almost a fail. Oh, it might help if I took my rod with me. What do you reckon? Are you going to help, Dan? Right in front of you. Yeah. Why would we travel yeah, I'm redoing them 10, all. 15, 20 kilometres when there was a number of fish in front of the house? But it was all about loading up those jet skis and setting off down the lake. Um, it's an area that Samir's fished in the past and he earmarked it for this trip, primarily because it doesn't see a huge amount of pressure. There's an awful lot of weed here. You know, it's no different anywhere in the world I fish. Anglers will try and avoid it Go down. Um, if they can. Dan's so lovely. Um, but it's a sort of safe haven for the fish. I think that was Samir's number one choice for, for this particular location. Although it may not look like it on the surface, trust me, beneath the surface, there's a lot going on. And that could be silt, sand, clay, rocks, uh, channels, roads, walls, buildings. Out to the plateau. Um, I was actually showing Alan yesterday on the echo sounder, literally the squares of where the fields were, the, the perimeters of the walls the channels, the irrigation bits, like literally just pointing it out to him on the echo sounder. And he's just sort of thinking, wow, like, it's mad, mad that all that's below the surface. But you've got to remember, this is a dammed river. People lived next to the river for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years. You know, so all this, everything that lives beneath the surface was one time inhabited by humans. And, uh, and now it's uh, the residence of the fish. If we don't catch tonight, I'll probably try and convince Alan to go tomorrow. Um, not that he normally needs much convincing to move. He loves a little move, doesn't he? Good old Al. He's probably bored out his mind at the minute, bless him. Why didn't, why didn't we use a guided tour? Um, we did, I went with Samir. Samir was my guide. But whether you're getting there and having your hand, hand held and your rods put out for you and your rigs tied, or whether you are touching Deep base with here. someone who lives in that area, to some degree, anyone in their right mind would try and glean some kind of prior knowledge on the venue they're fishing. That's a classic trait of an angler, and it's not something to be embarrassed of, you know, or someone in my position, oh yeah, but he works for a big company, of course he's gonna get inside. No, that's good angling. <laughs> gleaming as much prior knowledge as you can on the venue in the run-up to your trip. So yeah, for sure we could have gone and, and got a guide, um, but I didn't need to. We were out here, we're mates together, we're having a laugh, we're on a shoot, we're catching fish, we're making a documentary. His first time out here, I live here, I can catch fish here anytime I want. I really want him to catch a good one, you know. I want the gratification that I did it myself as much as I possibly could. I love it. I love nothing more than being out there on my own, endeavouring to do the best job I can to locate the best area. I want to put that rig down, yeah, but I'll come out and help your net. No. If I fell out of my depth, I'd always ask. I wouldn't be embarrassed by it. It's how I've got to this point, by asking people and watching videos and you know learning from others. But with Samir, he is one of those people that you don't want to really ask. 
just because I don't want it at the end of the trip, him going, yeah, well, you know how I do, I've basically done it all for you, Gage, you know what I mean? But no, Smith. <laughs> yes, he had to show me, you know, the, the, the way around the echo sounder. But after that, I never once would let him come out in the boat with me. I didn't want him in the boat. And he said to me a couple of times, he's like, bruv, it's windy. I said, no. Yeah, I just don't like tech, but he's given me a very, very basic rundown, which is incredibly useful, massively insightful. Yeah, mega tool. I've got one at home. For someone who loves carp fishing so much, for someone who puts so much effort into their carp fishing, and I do, I'll go the extra mile every single time to sit here now and say to you, one of the first items to not get loaded onto the van was the echo sounder. People will be watching this going, he's mad. He is off his f***ing head, like, but it's just who I am. But give me a prodding stick, give me a face mask, yeah, give me a pair of, um, flippers and a snorkel. Even the underwater camera, I'm in my element because you just lift the screen and it turns on. <laughs> I've never even changed the brightness setting on it. Some people are going, Way, well done, Alan. You're not one of these drone users or bait boat users. Way. But actually, what I'm trying to say to you is, I should be. I don't go to go, I did it all without the use of a drone. I don't care how I catch them. Like, I'm proud that I just use a rod and a line and a hook. I'm most proud of that. But I, I need to be going forward now, I'm more conscious that I need to make the effort to, to utilise these incredible bits of technology. Again, it's been a long day for the four of us. We're constantly joking about it, but Samir was right. The heat is unbearable. Next time I'd go for lush and green instead, that's for sure. Basto and I were worried that we'd end up shooting another day of barren rocks in the bright, harsh daytime. Not what you want when you're out filming. To then end up half asleep trying to pick up wobbly night shots once the fish actually showed up. Here we go again. You want me to come with you? No? Then we're ready coming. It's not like four o'clock in the morning, is it? No, it's not like last night. Busy night. I called it earlier, didn't I, Alan? 20 minutes, I said. Told you, bruv. It's not unexpected. I've sort of been waiting all day for it to happen. He's out there now, a long way, 250 odd metres. And uh, yeah, I really hope he's a good at it. Ah, man. Probably gonna have to give you my landing net pole when you pull me in, buddy. <clears throat> pull me over that weed, thanks, pal. It was zigzagged through the weed. I was just literally digging it out of weed, mate, digging it out of weed, getting off the leader. Suddenly it just go ping. Oh, it's over there now. Go over there. Oh, wow. I arrived and the line's going straight down. I can mm -hmm. feel there's, you know, it's like almost like solid. Just making that small amount of pressure, trying to move backwards and forwards in the boat, you know, trying to find that right angle where it's just going to go ping. And then it did ping. And the line just went <laughs> off in that direction. Okay. Out to the next bit. Four, something. Four, something like that. It's like, oh, this is horrid. This is horrid. But I managed to get the right angle on it, and it pinged up, and the carp just come to the surface, and I, I, I was stamping it out. And, and that one certainly had my heart in my hands on a few occasions. Oh, yeah. It's a pucker one. There we go. Could be an absolute hell of a rock out there in the weeds. Yeah, that big sense of relief, you know, once he's in the net, job done, big smile on my face. Go on now. No. Thanks for coming, you epic creature. That, that.
that's what I come here for to catch a fish like that. Then it did kick off. I had three bites, um, a small common, 22, 23 pounds, while the boys were all still awake. And that's well into the early hours now. Then managed to nick a couple of hours before getting two more bites you know, within the last sort of hour. And I've landed both of them. So last three bites I've landed. If I had to sit out here for another night or two just with a chance of catching a fish like that, I'd happily do it. You know, that's that's what I've come here for, a common of, you know, that just blows you away like that big tank. Like that's my ultimate goal. Like, if I'm not after a particular carp, I'm just after that buzz of catching a 30 kilo carp from Spain. And I'm trying my best to do it. I'm rolling already, yeah. The right way to start the day. <sighs> what a night. Um, if I hadn't have landed three fish last night, I'd really be like, oh, something's wrong, man. Do I lengthen my rig? Do I shorten my rig? Do I change the presentation altogether? Maybe fish with long hair. Um, but yeah, luckily, or for my sanity, should I say, I landed three on the bounce, which kind of puts your, your mind at rest that everything's all right. Could have just been bad luck. But I will monitor it, and if it keeps coming, the last thing you can do, something like this, bearing in mind Samir's only had two bites and two fish, 40 pound common and a 53 mirror. I've lost three. You don't want to be losing them. Really don't want to be losing them. Again, what Samir was suggesting was a slightly more forced big fish tactic, white pop up, but I've switched the pop up for just a white imitation boilie. Not as big as I'd have liked, I'd like it to be a bit more visual, like a big bit of 24 mil rubber or even foam. Um, but yeah, it's a 15 mil bit of plastic with just 10 white bottom baits dotted around it. Hasn't done a bite yet. Really content leaving it at the moment. I'm, I'm happy it's fishing. Uh, it was always going to be particles, primarily. Um, I took quite a lot with me. I used next to nothing. We were drying out our nuts, drying out the, the crushed tiger, um, putting them in sticks. I was drying out the, the large salted mix, adding some additional sort of Himalayan rock salt to it, making up these little mesh bags and lowering those down. So there was hook bait with a small amount of food around it and then just lightly scattering a little bit of bait around it. And that sort of stemmed, yes, from Samir, although Samir will be honest and say he's, he's as guilty as the next angler, that when you go in the boat and you've got a big bucket, it's all too easy. Oh, just give him one more scoop, especially on a lake of that size, you know? What's an extra scoop gonna hurt kind of thing? But listening to Bastel and Nick, you know, Nick went out there some years ago and had a really, really good session fishing single tiger nuts with just five or six three tiger nuts dotted around. I also tried that tactic. I've got no idea what other species are down there. You know, what's happening to that particle um, within maybe the first hour, for example, is it all but gone? You know, should, you be, should I be topping up more regularly? I, I, I half wonder whether they're, what's the word? Clued up, yeah, just used to it, you know, and feed maybe more like a normal carp. But I imagine wild carp coming across bait, Bearing in mind they've spent their life hunting mussels and crayfish and insects and bugs to come across static bait, I, I reckon they would feed really scatty on it. If you think of a big carp in a British day ticket lake, he probably plods along to his spot, seen it all before, big old bed of boilies or whatever, and he, he 
just starts munching and they munch through it. And he's conscious he don't want to get caught because he's been caught a hundred times before, but he's going to eat it anyway. He's, I think these wilder fish are different, man. I don't think they're actually used to seeing bait. I think it's all a little bit weird to them. Looking around at, at the anglers, how many of them are using particle? How many are using nuts, maize? Probably all of them. <laughs> yeah, generally the locals have their favourite spots and yeah, they're more of a bait and weight. But you know, that does work. You know, like I know good anglers or anglers who have caught well in Oriana through bait and weight. But um, that static kind of angling just absolutely bores me to death. And I'd rather just be at home really, doing something else than just sitting on the same spot waiting for them to turn up. If you're not catching, you want to be searching. Still not seen it really show here, have we? No. Probably caught more than we've seen show. Yeah. Mad. Head down, see what happens. I'm gonna get my rod sorted now. I'm only gonna do two, we're gonna leave the other two out. What are you doing? The plateau and then the plateau and this one, this one, this yeah, is the one. Are you going back into no man's land still? Yeah, I'm putting that one that one in the currents. Last night, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that same old thing, experimentation. Samir was banging on about white. For all I know, they hate white. <laughs> Should have tried orange. You know, do you know what I mean? You know, all of these factors. Rock. That is carp fishing. That is what makes it such a beautiful thing. And yeah, we just want to make sure that we don't um, drop our uh, was in the middle of the stones because that's not going to be great. Okay. Feel it down just like a deer from casting. Boom. Nice and hard. Because we weren't getting constant bites and constant action, it becomes quite hard to build up a, a definitive picture of what is and isn't working. Um, give me three, four weeks out there <laughs> without a camera crew. <laughs> I'll be telling you guys a different story now in terms of this is a really good rig to use and here's a really good baiting strategy at this time of the day in this depth of water. For me, it was all about enjoying it and, and getting a few bites along the way, as opposed to I was going there to crack the Orellana code. Well, oh, this is my gut instincts, me, but you know, you're the boss. Yeah, well, not in the case of you and Claire, no, she's the boss, but on the bank at the moment, you're the boss. And I, my, just my wish would be to get somewhere tomorrow, even if it's late afternoon, early evening, even if we don't get tomorrow, somewhere till dark, but that's it, we're in there then because I'm going to need to do any work, even if it takes me all night out in the boat, mm. ready for a storm. Yeah. Because I won't be able to fuck it. I won't be able to deal with it. And not unless I'm H-blocked. Like, now I will be all right if I can get my fish in like I've got it now. I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly where the rig's going. Yeah, yeah. And even in the wind, I'll be able to get it there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, cool, cool. I don't want to be looking for those areas in that wind. Much I'd love to be open water, so there's less points of reference. That's another thing as well. Double H blocking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've got to make the right decision tomorrow. Big decision, it's really big decision. Yeah, might big be decision. the last spot we trip, might right? be the last spot we fish, like. Although I would love <laughs> whatever we've got to do on that last day, work wise, make sure I'm fishing out in front of that house that last night, bro. <laughs> Eight meters, bang, 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 bang. Day does disappear. It does disappear quite rapidly. Last night is a bit of me. You know, when you've had sort of had four takes last night, it, it soon disappears, the hours. By the time you've been out to the fish, you've played the fish, you feel like you're fishing. Even though you're not sight fishing, you're not float fishing, it's active. There's something going on all the time. The adrenaline's there, the buzz is there. And you know, these takes, man, <laughs> fishing braids tight at range, and one of them alarms busting off. Yeah, that really gets the heart going. And, and then going out there and doing battle in the wind, it makes for still very exciting angling. So the moral of the story is, get your spots right. Make sure you can keep those bites coming and you don't end up having sort of big prolonged periods of inactivity. You can make it exciting. Another day spent placing rods, tying rigs, trying hard not to get sunstroke. Finally, the sun set so we could enjoy the moment anticipating the night.
As someone who's planning on moving the next day, he put a lot of effort in to get his swim weed free to get out quicker, like he would expect it to kick off again. to have a few bits in the boat. I've caused myself a bit of a drama there, potentially. Nice, I Yeah, pucker. Oh, right, your next boat is going to be literally five, ten minutes, mate. As these lads are going to be sorting it out. Same as last night. Yeah, it's going to bust off, mate. And he's immaculate as well, he's pucker. Let's tell. A little pointy one, the other one was much more rounded. Look, it's, it's quite straight, natural. Straighten your cap up as well. You yeah, you like have a look at that fresh pack. Prince of Bel Air. Oh, fucking. <laughs> that real narrow, but yeah. like super long. Look like at the way massive. it turns down at the end as well. What a lovely, lovely car. Off he goes, super strong. Top bus, ready for the next one. Right, mate. Wait, 30 yeah. minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Big snooze, lads. Did you hear that one? Nah. You heard that bastard? Yeah. Big one. Big one. Where? Right. Tell you. Oh, what? Out that way? Yeah, in the middle. <sighs> They're here, mate. Big one. <laughs> Big one. <laughs> <laughs> you know that sound? Everyone knows it when someone accidentally drops a pig out of a plane. <laughs> It's one of them. <laughs> the annoying thing is, not annoying, but for me, if the, I would still have equally as good a time if there wasn't the pursuit of a big one. Like, if the biggest one was 30 pounds, I'd still enjoy it. Yeah, the yeah. Same as I'm enjoying it now. That's the big difference between me and Smith. There is, there's the marker, as if by magic. Yeah, like, like the black. three, four, five bites a night, big one or no big one, it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. But most people won't look at it like that. Yeah, but they're only 30 pounders. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking exactly <laughs> that. But I'm genuinely sitting here going like, why can't it just be all right to just catch some really nice 20s and 30s? Exciting angling, like long range fishing, finding the spots, big boat battles. Like, why can't it just, why can't we just appreciate it for what it is? Why do they have to be 50 fucking pounds like, all the time to be meritless? And, but what I mean is like every time you get a bite and you're going out there, that could be 30 kilos. And that's what I think keeps you redoing the rod, redoing the rod. If you'd had four bites last night, they're all 30 pound, but you know that's the best you're gonna get. By three o'clock in the morning, are you really gonna replace all four rods, all four rods, all four rods? Or are you doing it because you know the next one could be <laughs> like... this one. There's been no activity in the day. That's been somewhat of a challenge. 
You know, there is no stalking opportunities. I'm not going to find him in edge under a tree somewhere and feed him a little bit of flake. Um, it's a big carp for you. You find a good area, you use strong, reliable tackle, you tow it out there in many instances, a long, long way, and then you have to sit tight. Love, massive thank you. <laughs> Love dickies. <laughs> well, we're getting amongst a few now as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Runs are coming consistent, but um, it's time to really get a move on now and explore more of the lake. So. I've only really got three nights left, so. <sighs> Got to make, make it count. Mate, you were going to say exactly <laughs> the same thing, bruv. We'll make oh, it mate. count, mate. We make shit happen, bruv. Thank you. See you later. See ya. Sit, bruv. Let's get packed up. Saddle up, cowboy. Come on. That felt good, Dan. That felt like I'd cracked a, a, a very small piece of the jigsaw, and then we moved. <laughs> Which I was glad about because it was these huge periods of inactivity, you know, and I can't deal with that, man. All day long, nothing, never see a show. So you've got to ask yourself the question, where are the fish? Yeah, in my head, they've gone. Inspired by these Florida YouTubers, you know, that are going out and catching Goliath grouper of 700 pounds on jet skis or they're trolling for marlin and catching marlin on jet skis. I'm thinking, hang on a minute, if they can do that in Florida, why can't I put an Ops fourfold, a water box and my rods on the back and go carp fishing off one? So I did. <laughs> bruv, bruv, bruv. You ain't doing this without me. I've always wanted to go fishing on a jet ski. What human being doesn't love blapping around on a jet ski. You enjoyed it, Dan. You had a little go, didn't ya? I challenge anyone watching this to have, a, if they've never been on a jet ski, jump on one braft now and get off and go, I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> it's just a sick thing to do, sick. I'm at a point now, I've been probably making this sort of kind of film for like 10, 12 years, and I need angles. Hi, I'm Alan Blair, and I'm at Orellana, and I'm gonna chuck a white chuddy out, and I'm gonna catch a cart from here. Let's do it. You know, I can't do that. I can't do it for my own satisfaction, and I can't do it to the viewer. It's not fair. It's not good enough. I've got a bigger responsibility to deliver something that puts a smile on people's faces and they enjoy. So, typical me, let's use jet skis. <laughs> let's get jet skis. That'll be a good angle got in touch with Samir and that was it. You know, the pair of us are just as crazy as each other. And the next thing, we've both bought a jet ski each and... I've been waiting for Alan to share the experience together, so... Yeah, I thought it was a tangible thing. A lake of that size, the fact you're allowed to use them, maybe it could be an advantage. Maybe. We picked up some iron, got the parts. Trying to get him to come to the lake and do it. Not having that. 
we'd add a little bit of drama. So ain't gonna make it. Best intentions, best laid plans, it all went to shit. I probably got about a kilometre and it was dead in the water. Obviously. <laughs> It's a daily occurrence. So Alan joined me on my jet ski because I decided to take his because I've got more mechanical knowledge and more experience with jet skis. Samir was now on my jet ski like, I'm just going to go and check it myself. And I'm thinking, that's not a good idea, man. My jet ski was all sounded well, um, but Alan's just wouldn't rev. When you jump one of them, obviously the engine, the propeller's out of water, so it makes it <laughs> So I can just see him flying around in front of me, making all manner of different sounds. He come back, yeah, it's not working now. I couldn't get it to work. No, 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 I told you it wasn't working, bro. I told you that we're gonna travel down there. I'm just gonna go very slowly on it. I'm gonna build it up to a speed and we'll be fine. And at the end of the day, mate, the boys on the boat can only go seven miles an hour anyway. So let's just do it together as a team. Um, so Alan towed us down to Big Fish Bay. <laughs> it was like towing a caravan, mate. <laughs> That's it, Claire on the phone, mechanics on the phone, this on the phone. In the end, Claire's been kind enough to come and help us. We're, um, she's going to run it to the repair shop in the morning. And hopefully, the guys there are going to get it repaired for us in one day. Yeah, which will be absolutely amazing. Okay. Which means you've only really lost a couple of hours, really. Which isn't so bad. So I can live with that. Trust me, it's strapping down skills. <laughs> and if it comes off, well. To be honest, the mechanic, the local mechanic, is not happy with us. Um, obviously, uh, my one's had a visit to mechanics, uh, Alan's had a visit to mechanics, there for the second time, and he is just literally crying. Pretty sure Alan's going to make it up to Claire after, <laughs> after she's been unbelievable this trip. She has pretty much been here every day to bring us even food, water, pick up a broken jet ski, you know, batteries. Okay, and um, yeah, she's been an absolute um, godsend. And I'm ever so grateful to her, you know, for supporting us this trip, you know, because without it, it would have been even more difficult. Thank I'm you. Sure. Muchas gracias. And then after, when it's all up, we jet ski together. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. We've come to a point in this trip and in this film where we simply just couldn't deny the fact that the whole jet ski idea just simply wasn't working. We've had multiple problems along the way and kept Claire busy by taking them to the garage. Once she got one of them back, the other would be broken. It really did hold us up, but there was no holding up on our pursuit of the big one. Samir took us to the Big Fish Bay and the name sounded promising that we've made the right decision. And he is right. You know, those big uns, they're not in groups of 20 pound commons. <laughs> There's not just a handful of big uns with those 20 pound commons. They're, they're somewhere else. So from a big carp decision, yeah, it was definitely the right thing to do. With the big winds approaching, the boys put in a lot of effort to once again get their rods out, leaving me and Bastel doing the cooking, preparing the very last meal for quite some time. I'm absolutely broken. But in that process, you know, all through that night uh, of being up, there was fish popping. There was fish showing and rolling. I think we heard the first one around 10 o'clock at night, good ones as well. And then I was really tired. I opened all the vents on my uh, uh, hide and the wind was ripping through it. It was lush. I just laid in there like, ah, oh, this is what I've needed all this time, man. And um, yeah, I slept. I really slept till six the following morning, a big sleep. Samir? Nothing. Nothing? Nah. Two guys moved in over there now. Where's the big one? Where's the big one? Now, I would have been more than content catching 20 and 30 pounders for at least two more nights. And me as a, an angler, I would 100%, if I could have turned the clock back, definitely stayed there, 100%. But that's fishing. I think I was influenced into it, like I say, by Chloe, Kevin, Samir, and yourself. Because that's what people like. I, I like it too, I love it. Big carp, big carp, big carp adventure. They just look cock on for a bite. So much so, we was, me and Al was convinced that um, 
that, the, that it was inevitable, it was going to catch big in there. In the morning I was up early and I was just filled with disappointment. Like, I was so gutted that one of the rods hadn't gone because I just felt like this was the moment, you know, this is the moment one of us is going to catch a really, really big carp. But it didn't happen and that's carp fishing. M my heart and my instinct is telling me we've got to go, you know. So up until this point we were catching fish steadily. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bites a night even, you know, it was really good. The fishing was great. I was loving it. I never loved sitting around, you know. As much as the area's got really good form, it's clearly a good area, otherwise these anglers wouldn't have descended uh, upon us. I just feel like we should have had at least a bite, you know what I mean? I want to move, like, I really want to move. I'm actually seriously thinking about having a coffee, throwing a waterproof jacket on, on and jumping on the jet ski and going to take a look. So, because there's no point just getting on the water if we've got nowhere better to move to. <laughs> oh, it's broken. <laughs> what battery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be a sick video with jet skis and car. Yeah, they look fucking sick, them jet skis. I got him, I got him. I'll get my camera. Get your camera quick, 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 quick. Jump out! Ab Abandon shit! Fish! I remember my first time on a jet ski. In conclusion, the jet skis have been absolutely zero benefit to this trip. Zero? <laughs> absolutely zero benefit. Zero. I, I've just said to Alan essentially what they are is clickbait. They're just clickbait. You know, watch our video using jet skis for carp fishing because they have not helped us in any, they've been a hindrance. They've been a hindrance. <laughs> They've been wor more bad than they have good. Because basically, the, the, the plan was, we'll be able to zip about, get everywhere really quickly, and we sit. Can't do anything. Get tools out. Gotta wait for the boys with the boat so I can go put a rig out with the boat. They're point they are pointless. They're po pointless to this trip. <laughs> it's not been the easiest of trips, that's for sure. We all knew what the right thing to do was, get the fuck out of there, you know. But we faffed around with a decision for an hour, maybe they're still here, maybe the big one's still in the bay, maybe we should just sit it out for the big one. I don't deal with blanking very well, at all. And Samir deals with it even worse. Um, no one likes blanking. It's part and parcel of fishing. Um, I come to realise that some time ago. The morale, I had you two there, you and Bastel, to, to keep that morale up. We, well, I think the four of us together actually did a, a, did a half decent job of keeping that morale up. Like your haircut. Don't he look like fucking naughty kid? Yeah. You know, the bully from those 90s movies. He's the dad lad. <laughs> yeah, let's load up then. Let's fucking go. Big car, this way. Yeah. Stop being negative, Dan. Stop being negative. Oh, I swear, tell him, bruv. We ain't negative people around here, Giggies. This is the land of Spanish Picard. We're going to fucking catch them. <laughs> <laughs> ain't we? Ain't we? You know, something that Kev taught me many, many years ago was if you're ever in a situation and you're fishing where you feel in a rut, where you feel it's not working out, where you can't catch, the advice he gave me, and I'll go to my grave with it as a solid bit of advice, is you take yourself off that venue, you go for a meal in the pub, or you go to the shop and get some fresh supplies, or you just take yourself out of that environment, and you come back with a new lease of life. You man the fuck up, you pack up, you move, you come off the lake, whatever it is, you basically hit the reset button, and you go, and we go again. Jagger, that's sagging. Roll it backwards, I'ma leave it at that. Now you got nothing to do with that. Shut up, that's expose those cats. Who poses heroes, take advantage of blacks. The government's gangsters will cut the crap. A war going on, so we all have. Fight the power
fuck is big responsibility? Ask the police, who's stopping you from killing me? This ass is fiasco, the loop by P.E. With this eye is telling we believe on TV. Oh, oh, oh. Rich riches, bitches is who think about snitches. Watch the masses move as the masses switches. System fist of a barely missed her. My soul is just gonna save my brothers and sisters. Get up! Film over from here, can't we? How are you doing? You were so happy before. Oh, I think we should go somewhere else, personally. If it was me now, I wouldn't, it's you now. I wouldn't fish it. <clears throat> then we're not. We are. Samir's already cracking right on, mate. I did arrive very cold and very wet, and I was literally freezing. I was shaking like you wouldn't believe. I knew it in Samir's eyes. It's like, that ain't the Samir I know. And I was like, if I get a bit of rain, send me out in a lightning storm, I'll fight anything. Right? It's just been mad hailstones, big winds, and moody skies, you know, like in the space of a week. Like, they don't call it extreme Madura for no reason at all. That's the reason why. And there's no naysay. Your help is really up, bruv. Make sure you bring lime to suntan lotion. And we kind of looked at each other and said, we've got to go in the dry. We've got to go in the dry. We need to regroup. We need to get warm. We need to have a bit of food. That still made the call. We need food. We need to get dry. We need food. Well, they didn't cross the Himalayas barefoot, but after crossing the lake, soaked to the bones, they really did need it to get dry and warm. Thanks to Samir's friend Pepe, we could use his holiday house for a quick pitch stop. We needed this. But even after drying off and being filled up with a warm meal, boys look tired. Feel better now? Not seeing really. huh? a single fish show. Wind's completely blown out of the bay. Not really my style. Not feeling it? Yeah. There was nothing in my gut, in my heart, in my head saying, Stay, fish here, fish here. Look. But as it gets towards the end of the trip, you really want to try and go out with a bang. I'm sure all of us do. It's not an unnatural feeling. But yeah, well, I um, I certainly want to catch one more big one before I uh, have to go home. And I know Alan definitely does. We got back down to that beach late that evening, into dark. And even though both of us weren't feeling it, we still give it 100%. You know, every single rod went out with like integrity and this is the best rod I will ever place with the best rig. Because you just never know, you know, when it's in the water, you, you might catch. And we didn't. <laughs> Sometimes I can let it go when it's been really good, you know. I never let it go because I'm tired though. We all want that happy end. Basta and I really did. We didn't want this film to be all about the jet skis making it clickbait in a way. All about tactics and rigs after only fishing it once. It would just be a pretentious thing to do. So why would we move over and over again, risking catching nothing with those two high maintenance guys? Well, because it all starts with that dream. The truth is, we're all very well aware that this kind of trip, it isn't for everyone. Not all of us get to experience an adventure like this ourselves. But if there is one thing that I'll take away from it, if you truly love fishing, you can find an adventure anywhere. There's a chance to either succeed or fail, but there's always room to dream. We just needed to make it happen. I 
gap every day and really all I want to do is go carp fishing. I come to work because I have to come to work. It's a means to an it's a means to allow me to go carp fishing and yeah, maybe one day like you will find me on the banks of Orellana with Myron Fern scorpion hunting and Chloe watering the peaches and not a bad way to, to spend a few years, that's for sure. Mate, playing a little free string banjo or something. <laughs> If I didn't work at Nash, if Kevin, if Nashy hadn't given me the opportunity he's had, no way. No way. If I was, uh, like, I don't want to pick a specific job. If I worked in a nine to five, if I did whatever, no, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Not unless someone had inspired me so much to, to go and try it. No, all of this is down to the business, the brand, and primarily Kev letting us go off and do these things with no reins whatsoever. Totally trusting us that, you know, we, we were doing it with the best intentions for the company. And they always have been that. Um, yeah, blessed, man. Totally and utterly blessed. That. It's the last collection of rigs. I am tying in extremity. I didn't want to leave. Genuinely didn't want to leave. And if I didn't have two beautiful kids and Chloe and a job to do, I wouldn't have come home. 100% wouldn't have come home. And to the point that Kev rung me, he's like, don't, stay out there. We don't need you back here. Have another week or two. And I love him for that. And he meant it. And I could have done. But I've got responsibilities. I'm quite not, I'm not quite at Samir and Claire boss level yet. Crank up and down, mate. Eh? Oh, it looks good for tonight, mate. I've got to have one. Oh, big big carb, big carb, bro, big carb. Dim carb, dim carb, dim carb, dim carb. When we catch them in the dark. <laughs> We all love the sound. Clang, 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 clang. Yes, mate. Cheers, Rob. Moments like these, eh? Yeah, mate. Not very well. <laughs> beep beep beep. Boop, doop, 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 doop. Beep beep. Boop, 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 boop. And you got to go all the way back out there. Oh, get back Four out. catfish in a cart. And a couple of weird ones. It's not like I'm not happy, but I always want more. Always want more. You know, it, it's difficult for an angler to ever say he's completely content because you can't complete it, you can't catch them all. There's always a bigger one, there's always a more beautiful one. I'm greedy myself when I know. No shit, Bastille. <laughs> No, I'd love to. I'd love the four of us to come back and, and fish together. Of course, the filming is a hindrance. Of course, trying to incorporate jet skis into a film is a hindrance. <laughs> There's loads of hindrances, but it all makes for what's been the most mega eight nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right one, hit it. <laughs> it's never over. Put my line around a discarded crayfish pot or something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? This is maybe not the best thing to be doing then. <laughs> See the line moving, Smith. <laughs> Big. Uh, just 
thinking to myself, is either going to be a decent one pop up or a small one attached to a crayfish pop up. <laughs> Like a bad one. No, it's not, mate. At all. Don't wake up now, though. None of us need that. We've seen it. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> oh. Sick guy. Yeah, he's proper nice, bro. Big and rock. <laughs> Real big. Oh fuck man. Yeah. yeah, in the middle. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> Damn car! Damn car! Damn car! Damn car! <laughs> If you'd have had a few 20 pounders and some scraper thirties, I could have almost believed it that a couple of bigger fish was, was just luck of the draw. But not to have all of those fish substantially bigger than mine. This, he was doing something different. And that's something that I will yet again take away from that session and try and adopt in the future, should I be trying to target, you know, more dedicated big carp. Yeah, so I didn't think it was quite as big as a. Hey, it's a mega carp, bruv. Mega carp. The target for me was to go fishing with Samir to Oralana. And even that wasn't the target, it was just to go with Samir. I almost felt, not, I don't want to say it like that, I felt obliged. I didn't feel obliged. I wanted to go fishing with Samir. That's what I wanted to do. That was the target. I wanted to go fishing with my mate. When I got out of there, and you boys piled the pressure on for me, we need something for a storyline. What's your target? What's your target? Well, okay, I'd like to catch a 40 pounder, but it genuinely wasn't. I said that for the film's benefit. I have a great network of friends, yeah, and, I, and even though I don't get to see everyone all the time because of, I'm always hopping around, like, I've met some of the best people I've ever met in my life in fishing, and that's a part of it, you know? Like, I live a carp life, bro. You can't not, because I am, you can't not be inspired by what they've done. And they've took a huge risk and a punt and they've changed their whole life for, for their love, which is cup. <laughs> like, this is my life, bro. Like, this is my life. Yeah, like, and people may say it's sad, but I don't care. I guess, in the end, we did make it happen. Our happy end. Of course we wanted Alan to catch a big one, but there's nothing sad or disappointing about that ending. Sharing Samir's carp life, even for a couple of days, catching carp like this on Aralana, it's more than we hoped for. Looking back, I'm grateful that we got to experience a true carp fishing adventure. This is it, this is your final interview. Was it the last night tonight? No. no. <laughs> Tonight's the last night because I will push it to the nth degree. Like, I will always push it. You know, Samir didn't fish it last night. I fished on my own. He was, he'll hate me saying this, and he will deny it, he was broken. He won't like it. I'm sorry, Samir, but you bailed on me, bruv. And even two or three days later, like, I spoke to him, he's like, yeah, I don't feel good, hell, man. I've still got, like, shivers and that. Man up, bruv, man up. We only did eight days. It was hardly like to hell and back, like, but it was hard going. We moved five or six times, and so yeah, even after all those moves, even after, you know, and I left it to the, the, the last minute. Poor Bastel thought he was going to miss his flight, but I weren't reeling those rods in until the last millisecond. Yeah, I loved it. You know, I'm not going to do it ever again. <laughs> ever again. I don't want to own a jet ski. I want the jet ski sold now. I've got a new idea in the flight fly. Here we go. Dan's cue, Dan's eyes rolling. Um, I've got, I, I don't want a jet ski anymore. It was a pleasure, it was a lot of fun, it's a great memory, but jet skis are not for me, and they're not for carp fishing either. What you saw at Aralana 
is what happened at Orellana. What to know. There was no contriving anything, there was no massive pre-baiting campaigns, there was no reserving swims. There was nothing, Dan. We tipped up at Orellana and we went fishing. We thought we were the big boys and that with jet skis. They were a complete and utter disaster. We blanked for at least 48 hours and we caught a few fish. That was the realness of the trip. And that's it, that is a wrap. Um, just a journey home to think about, but uh, yeah, everyone else uh, got a flight home. Ooh, celebrity anchor, hang on there. I can't believe I'm wasting precious bits from you. The sunset's nice. So, while everyone else got home last night, in their own beds, I've still got fucking 20 hour ferry journey home. It's cut, uh, I don't know if you see in the background, there's Dan dancing to Lighthouse Family. Is there one with you? Right, coffee. I don't want to go. I'm a two. Well, I'm going to have my third one now, and then I'm going to need a shit. He's gone, mate. He's gone to peck someone's head somewhere. At least ain't ours, eh? We've got 15 minutes quiet time. So, this is why I'm in my hotel. I'm about to get on my ferry, 20 hours by the way. No, when I say we're in the arse end of nowhere, I mean the arse end of nowhere. So we just said <laughs> Dan in that direction. I don't know if Dan's going to make it, bro. It's dark. Dan is going home with Claire. I'm scared. <laughs> Would I do it again? Yeah. First you do when you get back home. Well, back home home. Home home, yeah. Put a load of washing on. Cause I've been wearing, I've got some very, very dirty pants and socks. And then go fishing. Could be worse, eh?